wanted to take a picture of Andromeda galaxy today. Andromeda galaxy is an Andromeda constellation. Um, it's quite far from where we are. It's like 2.5 million light years away. The galaxy is so big, it is like if you want to travel at the speed of light, it takes like 220,000 years to go from point, like from one end to the other end of the galaxy. Uh, let me show you my workflow of how I took the Andromeda galaxy. Here is what I did in Pixensci. I got the pictures into Pixensci, used a process called subframe selector, and then I added all the files there. At the bottom of the subframe process, there is a button called measure. What that process will do is uh, it will create like a plot, like a graph of uh, various indicators. I use FWHM indicator to identify uh, which one is the lowest and then you can say where you wanted to move those files that are marked as X into like a junk folder. So out of uh, 230 pictures, I think roughly 20 pictures got moved into like a trash folder. The next step I performed is the batch pre-processing. Uh, this will stack your pictures in Pixensci. Uh, you can use this uh, you know, similar to the deep sky stacker. You have to bring all your lights here. Then you can uh, bring your uh, master dark file, master bias file, and master flat file. If you are using color camera, make sure you select CFA image. If you are using monochrome, you don't need to. And once you bring all those uh, files in, uh, when you run it, it's going to take a while to run it. But uh, when you're done, you will have your final picture in a folder called master uh, directory. There is also one more thing is you have have to select a reference image ideally you may need to select the best image you got out of your reference image you can use FWHM in the previous plot as your uh, background or you can pick the first picture or the very uh, last picture or however you wanted to do it okay the next one I did was the dynamic crop uh, once you open the file from the master directory it creates three files the rejection high rejection low and then it creates the final light file. Ideally, you may want it to use dynamic crop to crop the edges of your frame. If you have a little bit of more vignetting, maybe you wanted to crop a little bit more. All you have to do is uh, reset the button on the dynamic crop process and uh, bring the edges where you want it to and press the, you know, the process button. Then you should be able to crop your picture. The next step I did was automatic background extract called ABE. You can also use DBE in that place, dynamic background. All you have to do is uh, do a subtract and uh, you, you can see the background or you don't need to see the background, depends on your choice. But once you select those choices, I use the defaults, applied that on the image. This will take the gradients and the sky color and uh, I can see the background. You just need to perform the STF. And neutralization is a simple step. You need a preview for a background. You can also create another preview for your white reference. Use preview one to perform the background neutralization. You need two previews for color calibration. You need preview one background and you need preview two for the white reference. You can use those two previews, select them as part of your color calibration and apply color calibration to it. HDR multi-scale transformation is going to bring the brightness down of the core. For that, you need to extract a luminance image, luminance channel from your image and then apply that luminance channel as a mask on top of it and then apply the HDR multi-scale transformation. Notice the red is basically where you're protecting, which is actually you're protecting the background. And then you're using HDR on the galaxy. So if you go to the mask and if you see which mask you are using, the redness is the one that you are protecting. And then apply the HDR on that one and it reduces the brightness. You can see before and after. Since we performed the HDR multiscale to reduce the coreness of the galaxy, now we need to invert the mask and reduce the background. Uh, we need to make it a little bit darker, not too dark. So for that, we can use curves transformation. I wanted to uh, invert the mask, go into the curves transformation and uh, work on the luminance and the RGB background. I wanted to do, if you notice that it's still a grayscale image, there is no color to it. 
So I wanted to do this LRGB combination. So to do that, I'm going to extract the luminance channel again. And I wanted to do this LRGB combination to bring the color out of the grayscale or the brown scale kind of looking image. So I go into luminance channel, turn off the other ones like RGBs, select the second luminance channel, and then uh, in reduce the saturation. You may have to try reducing the saturation once or twice. And once if you are comfortable, you can apply that. You can also apply the chrominance noise reduction along with it. I wanted to perform the SENR to reduce that uh, little bit of green gradient a little bit. Uh, once you apply the SENR, I think that gradient you can remove. I wanted to create a mask using rain selection. Uh, the rain selection is going to let me choose based on the brightness. So I can work on the galaxy and the background separately by inverting the mask. So when you select the rain selection, you can pick what brightness level that you wanted to work on. Typically, the, the whiteness of the image is your galaxy and the background is the one that you can keep it separate. So you can exactly figure out what brightness you wanted to apply the mask on. I use the curves transformation to bring the colors out of the galaxy and also to neutralize the background a little bit. I use the star mask to create a mask on the picture. The idea behind is uh, I wanted to use the morphological transformation process to reduce the brightness of the stars. I applied the star mask. You know, the red protects the rest of the image. I use the morphological transformation process, increase the layers to like five layers, and then I use the circular kind of uh, shape, selected that circular shape, and then reduce the intensity a little bit. I played around with this multiple iterations. So anyway, this is my final image. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.